Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to our next session of our IG Live sessions called Friends of Friends, which we host with Rahana, where we connect with different entrepreneurs and amazing people who tell us um, just about different cool things about business and personal life and their careers. I had some trouble um, connecting today, but here we are. We're just waiting for our guest to join. Perfect. Let us know if you can hear us, of course, and we'll get started in just one second. Hi, Gina. Oh, perfect. Okay, I think it's connecting. Oh, hello. Hello, you. How are you, Justina? Good, good, good. How are you? Sorry for the little delay. That's okay. Out of, out of all the days today, you know, my tripod is falling over and it wasn't holding up. So oh my God, the same thing with me, the same thing. Look, I'm even too short for the camera today. So <laughs> we're gonna okay. we're gonna move up here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it's okay, it's okay. It's you know, we can see we can see you and you're in the middle, so it's all good. <laughs> all that counts, right? It's like the yes. small things sometimes. We have to just be grateful for. <laughs> yes, 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 oh, exactly. Oh, it's so good to be here with you. I am such a big fan of yours. And Thank I you. love We Rule Global so much. You guys do such good stuff for female entrepreneurs and leaders. So thank you. Yes, thank you for being uh, with us today. And I just wanted to say that I've never met Gina before. So this is the first time we're mm -hmm. chatting. So I'm super excited to learn more about you. So whatever you guys are hearing, I'm hearing it kind of for the first time. Um, I know you through Rahana, and she said so many amazing things about you. Oh, she's and we perfect. finally, I, yeah, we shout out to Rahana. Rahana! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she'll, she'll, hopefully she'll join us in a second. Uh, she's probably yelling at me that I was late. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, no, no, no. This and is casual, also, um, it's casual. Yes, of course, and I'm super excited. Maybe we can finally do the um, lunch in Central Park. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yes. Been planning before for, it like, gets... 100 years. I know, we have. It's been months, so let's do it before the snow hits the ground. Exactly. Yeah, because that's no fun. <laughs> Small yeah. details. Yes. Yeah. So just to kick off our conversation, can you just like give us a little bit of an introduction about who you are, about what you do? Yeah, I am a grief and trauma therapist in New York City. Um, I have a private practice where I work with uh, millennials, Gen Z, um, people going through really difficult or challenging transitions. They have decisions to make. They don't know how to do it. They've overcome trauma. Um, but the majority of a lot of my newer uh, clients have been coming through COVID, um, you know, and going through loss for the first time in their lives and really not knowing exactly what direction to go and understandably. So I've been doing a lot more of that. So, yeah, just a just a therapist like so many others out there helping <laughs> <laughs> at a time. No, your job is very important. And you know, I'm so glad we'll talk about it in a second, but I'm so glad that more people are realizing that mental health is very important. Uh, so yes, yeah, so thank you for all of your amazing work. And you know, uh, just a fun fact, I was watching, I don't know if you saw the documentary uh, by Fran Lebowitz, uh, Pretend It's a City. Yes, I love that. Oh, it's so good. But she it's talks so good. about the therapist in New York City, like in other places are like, oh my goodness, I hate my husband and this and whatever, and you know, my job. And in New York City, it's apparently like, it's so loud. Someone's screaming at the top of my window every single day. And I can totally relate to that, so. It's so true, it's so yeah. true. Yeah, we have our own personality here. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, yes, congratulations all of you on all of your success. And I can't speak English sometimes, so I always mention that. So if I stumble, just bear with me. Um, You're doing great. Yes, yeah, but I would love to learn more about just your childhood. Like, where do you come from? And um, did you always know that you wanted to have this career? And like, how did you figure mm -hmm. out that this is actually what you want to do? I, I came from, well, I come from Italian, uh, an Italian background. My family comes from Italy, um, but I grew up in the Hudson Valley. And although my grandparents came to the city, and so I've been sort of in and out of the city my entire life for a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I grew up in the Hudson Valley area of New York, which is really beautiful, just up the Hudson River, about 50 miles, and loved having a backyard and like tree houses and stuff like that. <laughs> Got very tired of it though, I think quickly and realized that life was down here where my grandparents were and like needed more of this energy. Um, so yeah, and as a kid, I was a singer and, you know, sang with Carol King on a children's album and, 
did all sorts of different commercial type things. And so I always thought as a kid, I was going to be a singer in some capacity, whether it was like, you know, a wannabe Broadway singer or, you know, just, I don't know. Music or like Lady Gaga. <laughs> oh my God, never, but <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. So I really always thought that performing and all of that was going to be my life. Um, and then quickly realized that like, I was really passionate about international affairs and things going on abroad. And, you know, luckily we traveled a lot as kids. So I wasn't really shielded from poverty and all the things that I would see on our trips. You know, we didn't do just like luxury resorts. So it was really, mm -hmm. I think it was scary at the time for me as a kid. But I think what I took from that is like, wow, there's a lot of people in need out there and a lot of people suffering. And I kept that with me, I think, throughout, throughout my life and wanted to do immigration law, humanitarian law. And law is not for me, but I really <laughs> loved the idea of, you know, helping people. And um, so I started my career out doing a lot of international trauma work. So that was sort of kind of how I got into it. I mean, it's sort of this meandering little story of how I, you know, how I got there. But I've always really been interested in understanding the human mind and the human heart and how they how they get through really hard things and you know september 11th really solidified that here in new york when i was doing a thesis on um, international terrorism and the psychological aftermath and so ptsd became and trauma became just really at the forefront of everything i wanted to do and i knew mm -hmm. from that day forward i was going to be a trauma therapist in some way and I was <laughs> from that day forward. Um, but I got into grief because it was really the one way, the one thing, it's like the ugly stepsister mm -hmm. that we never talk about of trauma, which is that there's always a before and an after, and there's always something to grieve when we've gone through something really difficult. So yeah. that's sort of how I wound up here. It's my long story short. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? And I feel like that's so important. And I feel like you come from such a positive place, which I love. <laughs> And even if you think about, you know, um, you know, like the terrorists, right? Like, let's say like they also go through trauma and grief and, you know, all these negative things that makes them become these people, right? So I feel like uh, we are all somehow connected and th that we all go through some kind of, you know, on some level uh, through some trauma, through grief in our lives, like whatever they that might be. Um, so my next question is for you, like, what are kinds of different kinds of trauma? Um, and how can we even like identify that we have trauma as people and why it's kind of like, if you can also touch upon like why it's important like for our careers, for our lives, for our well being, to actually go out there and identify them. Well, I think that there's, um, I'm going to say something a little controversial, but I think trauma That's is a good. little bit of like a little bit overused sometimes mm -hmm. and that people sort of take something that can be an emotional response, an appropriate emotional response to something hard but call it trauma. Um, you know, there's obviously the big traumas like, you know, disasters, war, you know, things like human trafficking, there's sexual assault, you know, there's um, sexual abuse, all that stuff. But there's also bullying, neglect, verbal mm -hmm. abuse, there, like things that we don't really think about, you know, emotional neglect being a trauma. Um, but it is, you know, mm -hmm. and so we form trauma reactions, which are ways to sort of navigate the world with our big wound, um, mm -hmm. which is not always good for us. Um, <laughs> you know, and so I guess that's where I always say, if you feel like you've been, you know, a, a victim of something that is perpetual, you know, if it was sort of a long term, um, it was a long term relationship trauma, you know, whether you've been like gaslit or, you know, just bullied in any mm -hmm. way. Um, there's a lot of gaslighting out there these days, which is sort of another buzzword. Um, but that's a good place to start, you know. Um, any way that you feel que that you can question, is this trauma? It's always a good idea to like either talk to someone, a therapist, online therapist, someone you know, um, just to make sure. Because I do think that we have to be careful that we don't traumatize somebody further by saying they're traumatized that true, makes true, true. <laughs> true, you know it's like telling a person who has a sickness it's like wow you're sick by the way and just keep on telling. it's like the same thing of course yes 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 yeah exactly i mean i just think that we don't want to give people anything that they don't feel they have mm -hmm. 
you know. I, yes, I, I agree with that. And um, I think it's so interesting um, that you said that there's like all these kinds of things that even like emotional trauma, right? Like as a thing. And I feel like me as a person, and I don't know if that's common, uh, like I've had some actual trauma in my life, especially in my childhood. And I feel like I just like grew a lot from it and I became extremely strong. Like no one can mess with me. I never went through actual therapy, but I feel like I never knew that it was even trauma. Mm -hmm. But people were like, you know, oh, Justina, you did have some trauma in your childhood. Like that's pretty like legit. You know, you should probably talk to someone about it. And I'm like, <laughs> no, whatever. Like I'm just trying to like just build this wall. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I feel like building, you know, like being strong is good. But sometimes I feel like people need to learn more how to be vulnerable and have those conversations, right? Totally. And look, let me just say, as a therapist, you know, therapy is not necessarily for everyone. Wherever you can get support in some way where you can release it, be witnessed, have your story seen, held, cared for, all of that is therapeutic, right? So it's mm -hmm. not like you have to call me up and like sit across the couch from me. Mm -hmm. um, you had me until you said build a wall. I don't want you to build a wall. <laughs> we want you to be strong, but we don't want you to build a wall because then you can't get out and no one can get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But that's what I'm actually working on right now. Like I'm in this space okay, where it's like, it's like half down and it's half up, you know? So <laughs> I know I'm like, I caught that. I was like, yeah, no, Justina, we want you to be, we want you to feel safe, right? Building exactly. a wall means that we don't feel safe. So yes, but I know a lot of people have mm -hmm. actually have done that and they just build this wall and they like don't let anyone in. And I'm like in the middle of like working through that. So so don't worry, I don't have like these, you know. <laughs> okay, good. We're gonna I'm gonna follow up with you privately. <laughs> okay, How's cool. that wall going? <laughs> you can talk to Rohana, I'm warm and fuzzy now. So <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. I'll follow up with her. Yes, so, so it's good. So you know what, um, can you tell me a little bit about I'm interested um, to learn more about what are some like outcomes? Like once you realize that you have trauma and you kind of like start dealing with it and start like tearing that wall down, like what are some like good examples of like things that could happen in your life from like dealing with it, you know? Like some you mean, common things. You mean like a positive outcome? Yes, exactly. Like, you know, like do you think well, that people usually see a lot of success in their personal lives or relationships or maybe career? Um, and do you think it like it depends on the person? Like, does it take 20 years? Could it be something really quick? Like, what does it really depend on? What are like the good things that can come out of it? Well, I mean, look, I think it depends on how old, if we're going to talk trauma, but I also want to also talk about grief since that's mm -hmm. a really big yes, part of it, is really understanding what you've lost and mm -hmm. what you, what you've left behind is really important. I think how old you are is really important when you've gone through something your developmental age when you're going through a really difficult time matters a lot because in our younger years, we're learning coping mechanisms, we're learning how to model relationships, we're learning how to like navigate who we are in this crazy world. And so if it's something that happens very young and you don't deal with it until you're older, it's almost like you're sort of reliving this world, reliving mm -hmm. your childhood, but in a freer way, right? You sort mm -hmm. of want to go back in a sense, you know, and I'm not saying you have to tell your story, but sort of just talk about the feelings that came up. Um, the positive things that can really come from it are a lot of it, a lot of it is relational, mm -hmm. right? That you have, you can feel safer in relationship. And that goes across the board because that can be your coworkers, that can be your boss, that can be your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, you know, whomever, whatever, um, you know, emotional partner, it could be your friends, even, you know, I have some friends that have been through so much in their childhood that they really have a difficult time letting people in. And mm -hmm. sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, the wall. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think, you know, I think that, you know, one of the things that would be the most helpful within treatment or within kind of doing the work around that is that you then become more discerning on the people that you choose to have around you, you know, putting safety first, not, you know, you know, having really safe and strong boundaries with people and, and, and being able to kind of say what's on your mind without worrying that there's a negative repercussion. The hope is that the healing of that relational trauma leads to overall more of a sense of safety and who you are in the world, even if the world is unpredictable and unsafe. You know, yeah. that you can create your own world, you know, in a sense, whether it's your colleagues, job, you know, <clears throat> hobbies, friendships, 
you know, and love life, whatever that looks like to you, um, that it can just be mostly, if not 100% safe to you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love it. Totally makes sense to me. I'm like, I'm like taking notes as we go. Um, so my next question is, um, you know, a lot of people that I know and what I've heard out there in the world um, is that a lot of people like are scared to just like let go of things because let's say they lived with something for like, let's say 10 years, 15 years. And um, you just mentioned the word of just like the, if you're losing something, right? That's as that's grief, right? Because you lost something like how do you deal with just letting it go and just like losing it? Because I feel like that's kind of like more of like a negative thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's a positive thing, but the losing part is like, you're getting rid of something, you know? Well, it's, it's kind of like getting rid of that like bad relationship that it's just like, you keep coming back to it. Not me though, but I've seen it before. I like, well, once I'm gone, I'm gone. But um, you know, like people are just like, getting rid of the bad relationship or something, you know, or maybe a toxic career environment or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't see any bad in losing that stuff. <laughs> Uh -huh. I think that's kind of what the point of the healing is, is really being able to, and I don't really guess, I don't look at it as losing as much as, uh, as gaining something healthier, mm -hmm. right? Like making a choice in this direction, as opposed to staying here, you know, really asking yourself, how do I want to be feeling? Or <laughs> how have I been feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, I've experienced myself this way. How do I want to experience myself now? Um, so I don't really see like, you know, the walking away of something unhealthy or traumatizing as, as losing something as much. I think in breakups that can def that can definitely lead to grief um, more than any other thing like a job or, you know, something, something, you know, less um, that gets inside of you or less pervasive. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, sure, people do grieve breakups 100%, you know, and I think what it is, is not necessarily the person, but the hopes that they had for that relationship, you know, the, the time that they put in that they can't get back, mm -hmm. you know, the hope that they had that there would be a beautiful or, you know, peaceful, wonderful future with this person, you know, and who you were perhaps even before you got into this relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you could also grieve the time that you won't get back. I mean, there's so many different <laughs> <laughs> things you know with within that particular uh type of grief but i generally don't think it's a bad thing to not want to grieve the abuse mm -hmm. itself or the negativity itself but rather mm -hmm. all of the things that you gave up or or didn't see or ignored or were too scared to confront okay. while mm -hmm. you know at that same time Wow, wow, that's, that's, that's really amazing. Like I have chills right now, because I definitely, I've been through that. And I feel like it's like, almost like an ongoing journey, because you have like, all these things that you have to, to kind of battle in your life, right? And mm -hmm. you just have to let go. And I always like to say, like, for example, not a lot of people, I have a lot of amazing people in my life. But when, like, a bad one apple like gets through, and I have to get rid of them, you know, and I have to grieve that friendship or whatever it was. Ooh. I that's always hard. say that I'm firing them. <laughs> I'm like, that person is just fired from my life. Like, it's done. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> that's so funny. I say the same thing. I say the oh, same Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I love it because it makes, sort of takes out some of the emotional sting from it. Mm -hmm. But really, if, like, you're not doing, if you're not good at your job of being my friend, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. as in, you know, reciprocal caring, respect, regard, love, all of that, then, like, you're, you're fired. Yes, 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 exactly. And I used to have this roommate in college too, who would always laugh at me because I'm really good with getting rid of like bad, like romantic relationships. I'm good. I'm like, I'm yeah. done. So um, my roommate would always laugh at me that he's like, oh my God, Justina's machete is coming out. Like she's just cutting it off that relationship. <laughs> so. I really love that visual too. Mm -hmm. I love like it. You're just cutting it off and goodbye. Um, yes. So can you share a little bit, and I don't know if you want to, um, we don't have to, but um, do you have any like personal experiences with grief and like, how did you go about it? Like about that whole journey and about that whole process? If you can sure. share that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that, look, I don't know that there's anybody watching or anybody who will watch later who hasn't grieved something. And, you know, we have to start looking at grief as more than just a loss of a person. There's so many different types of grief. Um, I've had a lot of grief in my life, but more recently, I lost my mother to cancer um, after a pretty short uh, battle with it. Um, she was diagnosed pretty late and misdiagnosed and all of that. So it was pretty traumatizing, to be honest. But um, 
And it was really interesting because as a grief therapist, it was almost like I thought I had a leg up on this. Like, oh, all right, this is what I do all the time. I do this every day. Of course, I know what I'm doing. Um, but I think like I thought I would like stand on top of this hill with like this victory flag, right? Um, before I did anything. So I didn't even feel the feelings. I just kept going. I, I just kept working. I kept doing. I had a lot of things I had to do at the time. And you I kept this basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. I just kept it moving. And that's like the opposite of what I would tell people to do, unless they had to, right? But I felt like I just. I just thought like, oh, this is what grief is, just intellectualizing it, even though I know better. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, and I, I, I'll just interrupt you for a second. Like, I feel like that's, that goes with literally everyone. Like, I used to work in fashion, I used to work in fashion, and when I worked mm -hmm. in fashion, I didn't look like I worked in fashion. Now I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, and I can tell everyone how to, you know, this is how you raise money, this is your pitch deck, let me design it for you, mm -hmm. this is your strategy, this is this, revenue. But for my own business, I'm sometimes like, Oh my God, what, what do I do first? What do I do? <laughs> it's so true. I feel like that's a really common thing. Like we're always really much better at telling other people what to do and what's right than actually mm -hmm. doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, you know, like I really learned the hard way because the year that my mom died then, I got really sick. You know, I got diabetes, I got thyroid disease. So many things were happening in my body and I just needed to stop for a minute. I needed to stop working so much and like, I <laughs> kept going. And, um, and I, you know, I, if I could do it differently and go back, I would say like, stop, Gina, just like instantly feel what you have to feel. Because mm -hmm. the more that we run away from our feelings, the more they, they run faster. They come up in yep. these other ways. You know, I thought I was escaping because I didn't feel necessarily the need to cry or all of that because my mom and I were really close but I also was like a full-grown person you know mm -hmm. I think she left me pretty whole like we had a beautiful relationship we lived it inside and out and I was so grateful you know to have such I, I am still grateful to have such a good mom mm -hmm. um but I think I wanted to hold on to that more than mm -hmm. I wanted to hold on to the loss of it yeah. And, and you know what? That's so crazy that you say that. I had a similar relation, similar thing, but with like a relationship. Okay. That I, I broke, and actually the whole biz, like whole we rule is built literally probably on grief now that we talk about it. I uh -huh. swear, I swear to you because like I had this boyfriend and I was so in love with him. And I, when we broke up, like I was still in love with him and I pushed him away probably because of my previous trauma in my life of the wall, right? Yeah, I wow. swear in front of everyone that's going to watch this that I literally every single day for three years, I cried over this guy. But during the day I woke up, I was okay, business, let's do it. Let's do it. Next thing, event, this, 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 this. And that's actually how we will happen. But then I would go home for three years. I couldn't go on a date. I couldn't do anything, nothing, because I was just kind of like, no, 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 I'm just going to suppress it. I'll deal with it later. I don't have time right now. I have to go to, you know what I mean? So huh. I like it's in, in, in a way, like not, you know, what happened with your mom, which is, you know, like the worst thing ever. But I was like, I'm suppressing this. I'm okay. Let me work, work, work. I'm fine, fine, fine. Everything's great, you know? Yeah. But now we have we roll. So something good came out of it. But something <laughs> great came out of oh, it. You help, yeah. you help people now. That's what I have to say. I mean, there's so many really beautiful things that come, can come out mm -hmm. of pain when we allow ourselves to feel it when we allow ourselves to work through it, you know, or let it work through us, you know? So, I mean, that's the one, the one positive thing I would say, you know, I mean, what I really needed at the time was like a book, like a roadmap, but every book out there was written by this like old white guy, and, <laughs> yes. you know, I just, or somebody a lot older. And I just mm -hmm. wanted something that spoke to my lifestyle you know, and that could give me some answers. That was something I wasn't doing, you know, mm -hmm. and then something I could give in return. Um, I never found it. So I decided to write it. And so oh, yes, we'll, actually, we'll yeah. talk that about was that like later. My, that was my, my next question in a second. But tell us a little bit about your book that you're writing. Yeah, I'd love thank to hear that. You. Oh, no, thank you. Um, thanks for asking. It's it's exactly that. It is, it is a grief book 
that meets you where you are, that gives you tools and exercises, that shares a little bit of my story, how I got grief wrong, because I got it wrong as a grief therapist for a little while, the lessons I learned along the way, but also kind of like how it affects the rest of your life, right? Like grief is this all encompassing thing that we think is so mm -hmm. finite, but it seeps into everything, you know, how it affects your body, how it affects yeah. who you are in the world, the people that we keep around us. It's everywhere. And so it's really an ode to the way that grief can really transform our entire lives and making sure that we're prepared for every part of that. So for, for younger people, that really speaks to our lifestyle and like, you know, our language and all of that, because it can be really hard. You know, there's so many books on grief. Most of them are either Christian or, you know, written by somebody who uses language that's pretty dated, you know, uh -huh. mm -hmm. doesn't understand how you can even gaslight yourself in your own grief, you know? Of course. And I feel like in today's world, I mean, you know, with social media, which is, you know, I mean, we're connecting in a positive way, but, you know, all these studies are coming out how, you know, people, uh, younger people are having so much, you know, problems with social media because of depression, you know, they're seeing unrealistic totally. images out there, un <laughs> unrealistic lifestyles. Um, so I feel like that's so needed right now because I'm sure they will not read a book that's just like super scientific and like, you know, here's X, Y, and Z, like some, you know, some guy from Colombia that wrote it, right? So I, I like would that's like an it. amazing, oh no, <laughs> I tried to read books like that before and I'm like, I really have no idea what's going on and I can't speak English, so. Yeah. <laughs> so we I should be written. Exactly. People should be writing books that speak to the people, not mm -hmm. having people learn, especially in the mental health field. Mm -hmm. You know, like look at social media. We're trying to like, you know, as much as we can simplify some really painful, difficult, uh, you know, complicated things mm -hmm. within seven seconds of reels, which is really hard, <laughs> hard to do. But you know, but what I think is positive about it, which is hard for us as therapists who work a whole lot, um, to then try to be entertaining. But what I do think is important about it is that people who wouldn't understand what they were going through now have now have some idea. And when you can understand what you're going through, you can take a step towards healing it. Mm -hmm. And that's the most powerful thing about it, even with social media, but even with these books, like let's write a book that people can say like, that's me. The that's story that I she's writing. <laughs> yeah, like I share client stories and stuff like that for someone to be like, oh, her character's me. That's me. That's what I'm going through, you know, and you feel less alone. That's the whole point. That's the whole yes. point. Yes, yes, yes. I oh. love that you say that. So I have a next question for you is you're a therapist, right? And, I am. Um, you write on grief and I feel like you have such a very positive um, outlook on it, right? That a lot of good things can come out of it if you deal with it in the proper ways. Sure. But you, for example, you sit in sessions with people who are telling you, you know, your problems every single day and their trauma. And sometimes me, even like, you know, my friends come to me and they're like, oh, this happened and this happened. And oh my gosh, you know, like, how do you deal with people presenting you with so much negativity in their lives? Like, how do you take care of yourself? Like, how do you, you know, replenish, you know, your energy? And how do you do wellness? I would love to learn about that. And yeah. how can people, you know, help people who are going through it? And sure. I wish I could see it as negativity. You know, the way that I feel when people come to me is that, you know, it's their choice, right? So they just, they want to see it a different way. They want to feel a different way. They want to look at their lives in a different way. They want to make a change that feels better. So to me, it's really hopeful. Like, no matter how much, like, negativity, quote unquote, it may seem like to me, it's like, oh, you've chosen me to take a journey with you. Mm -hmm. And we get to go from here to somewhere else. And you tap and you trust me. And we're in this together. Like I'm your traveling companion. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm your ally, you know, and we're going to do this. And so I'm so deeply honored by the whole idea that people can entrust another human to go every step of the way with them and that that person is me. I'm so every single day, so honored. Um, I love that. That's, no, such a, that's such a great message. I love that. It's really wonderful. And I think if anyone, and I'll get to your question with my sidebar, if anyone really does want to go to therapy and they're, or they're in a relationship with a therapist that doesn't feel like that, like run, mm -hmm. just go and find somebody that you can feel comfortable with someone who has your back, somebody, who has knowledge in the area that you need help in is trained, educated, all that stuff, but mostly gets your heart and that you know you're in a safe place. 
that's the most important thing when you're going to therapy. So yes. Um, yes, I love that because I feel like the way it's portrayed, like even in the media, like you're going to therapy, you're dealing with your grief. It's such like a negative thing. You're just like laying there and you know, you're talking about your problems and you know, the therapist is just like taking notes and not doing anything. So I yeah. love because I, I, I've never been to therapy. Maybe I should, but you know, like just the way you, you talk like about it. it yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like it's such a positive thing now that I talk to you about it, that it's like, it could be like an exciting thing. Now it's like, oh, I have to go to therapy today, you know? <laughs> yeah, it can be exciting. I mean, look, even the hard, like, sure, are there hard days? Of course, of course there are. But to know that there's somebody there that can hold your pain and hold space for it to help you navigate it in a way that brings you to a place where you can feel freer mm -hmm. and like let go of the weight that you have on your shoulder. Uh -huh that can help you see things in a different way than your friends can because we're objective, right? Like mm -hmm. we are like birds. We like lift above your life. We can see the past. We can see the future based on the, we can see the past based on what you tell us, but with our knowledge and our training can help you see the future in a different way and head in a different direction than maybe mm -hmm. you would be headed. So it's really cool, you know, and it's, um, it can be exciting in that way. And even when it's hard, you know that you're held and cared for a hundred percent of the way, especially if you're with the right person. So yeah. make sure, and that's why I always say like, you don't feel good in therapy. If you're scared of your therapist, if you're scared of <laughs> them, I get a lot of people, you'd be surprised. They're like, I don't want to tell my therapist that. And I'm like, what are you going to think? You paid a lot to your therapist. Like that's bad news. Like you should be seeing someone you can tell her or him anything or them anything you know, and that's, that's the joy of this work, you know, yes, yes, yes. but yeah, to your question earlier, sure. Does it sometimes take a toll? I think during COVID a hundred percent, because mm -hmm. I was taking on a lot more than normal and I was like stuck inside <laughs> and it was hard, you know, but, um, but for me, honestly, self-care is making sure that I have really good boundaries. I only spend time with people that I love that nourish me, that I feel like a reciprocal care for. Um, I think COVID taught me that, you know, we can so easily stretch ourselves out and stretch ourselves thin with wanting to have a lot of people in our lives and be social. But COVID taught me like, no, let's just like nourish the relationships that are meaningful. So, and then do really good plans with them, right? <laughs> and like, being outside for me is so important. Central Park is like my oh, our backyard. <laughs> yeah, it is my therapy, you know, without yeah. Central Park, I think I would have like been really 100% more stressed out than I was, you know, traveling now that we can mm -hmm. sort of do it again is really big deal. You know, I think anything that can take you out of where you are whether that's like a road trip or different part of your town or whatever it is, a walk in your backyard sometimes yeah. can be so therapeutic, you know, for me. And it's just like switching up that routine, right? Um, totally. A little totally. bit, yes, yes, yes. I love that. So um, one more question that I have for you. is kind of, It relates uh, on this topic. Um, and do you have any other meetings, by the way? Because I know it's past one. But... I do at 1.30, but okay, I'm perfect. perfect now. Yeah. Okay, I'm perfect, holding perfect. myself up on my chair right now. So if you see me start to like get tired, I'm like, oh, my arms are tired. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, make yourself comfortable. All good, all good. <laughs> so okay. my question is, is it's some kind of, um, sometimes like with mentorship, right? When I talk to a lot of mentors, is that even in business, instead of people giving, like you said, objective advice, is that they are trying to think based on their own experience, how they would handle something, but they are doing, like they're giving advice based on themselves. And I feel like it's kind of sometimes when you're giving advice to a friend, even on like a personal topic, it's like, oh, I would do this. Oh, I would never do yeah. this. You know, how do you, when you're conversating with someone, um, how do you uh, make sure that your opinion or like your advice is objective? Like what are, like, how do you make sure that it's not like, oh, Gina would do this. So let me tell this person this. I think because so many of the people are coming in with different experiences that helps, right? Like I haven't lived the lives that the people have come to see me are living. But more than that, I think that as a therapist, you really tap in so deeply to who they are, what they value, where they've come from, what their fears are, that it really is all about that other person. And I, you know, 
I think getting to know somebody really deeply and I think honoring where what those fears are and where they've come from really does help to keep it really more client focused. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly times where like Gina the human comes through and be like, you cannot put up with that behavior. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, We're but it's like that person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because yeah. we are human. We're human, right? But I, I'm never gonna just 100% be like, well, you should work a lot, and you know, don't feel your feelings, because that's what I did, and it like mm -hmm. got you know, or don't do this, because this is what I didn't do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it happens that easily with therapy because you're so tuned in to the experience of this person that you take their entire lives holistically into account when you're making any kind of comment, encouragement, suggestion, all of that stuff. And we don't really give advice, you know? Mm -hmm. It's more like I'm trained to ask the questions that lead you in that direction without telling you to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. If that's the right direction for you, right? Yes, yes, like yes. The yes, direction yes. of being healthy and good and all that other stuff. But yeah, that probably should be the direction. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. I don't know if that answered your question, but I think so. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think okay. So. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> so one more thing um, that I wanted to just ask you is, as we close out the, you know, our conversation is, is there like one more, uh, you know, piece of advice or anything that you'd like to share uh, with whoever's watching this interview um, later on? A piece of advice on, well, I mean, on like all of this? Yes, on all of this, but just maybe on grief because that's what we talked about earlier. Um, yeah, sure. Grief in their lives. I think, look, what people sort of get wrong when it comes to grief is thinking that that it's an ending you know, and that your relationship is gone too. And I would say that like, if you're grieving, you don't have to necessarily just move on. You can bring this thing with you into this new life that you're, mm -hmm. that you're building. Um, you know, we tend to compare to everybody on the internet and it's really hard to know where we're at when our reference point is when we're comparing with everyone else. So I always say like everyone's coming from a different history and a different relationship and a different, you know, mindset. We just can't compare ourselves to people on the internet. We just can't. <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's literally can't. impossible because I always say that it's like whoever you're talking to or meeting, even for business, whatever on social media, it's like you don't know what they been through and you don't know what they're going through right now maybe it's nothing maybe it's someone big something big that they're hiding you know so totally. I feel like that's why you can't compare yourself or you also can't you know judge someone for however they you know react to something oh totally mm -hmm. totally I think one of the good things about social media and especially for me even on Instagram is and this would also be advice like follow the people that either are going through what you're going through or have gone through what you've gone through, people that inspire you, people that are healthy minded, mm -hmm. you know, there's- Who don't Photoshop their photos too much. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. There's such a, a beautiful grief community for anybody who's watching, you know, it, look at my followers, see who I'm following. They're beautiful people who are community minded, um, diverse, beautiful humans who have been through pain and are willing to be open and vulnerable and sharing it and sharing resources because of it. Um, I think that's amazing. But also just, you know, be gentle with yourself, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening right now, feel your feelings, don't push them away. Don't try to be building a wall. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't do what Justina did. <laughs> don't do what Justina's doing. No, I'm kidding. You know, protect yourself, but also like maintain like deep connections with people who want to reach you all the time because you deserve to not go through any of this stuff alone, no matter what it is. Trauma, pain, breakup, like you don't have to be through this go or go through it alone. So yeah. And you know what, I'm sure you'll approve of my little thing that I do sometimes, uh, because for me, it's like I work a lot, right? So sometimes yeah. when I'm going to sleep, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I did so much work today. So I give myself a little imaginary hug. Like literally when I go to sleep, I'm just like, okay, you need a hug today. Like, okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. Is it imaginary or can you like legit go all up? Like kind of, but sometimes it's just like an imaginary thing that I'm just like, okay, like you're getting a hug today. Like good job or you went through something. So that's why like every time I go to sleep and I'm like, 
like feeling a certain way i'm just like okay good job like <laughs> okay you give yourself a hug just for surviving the day and not for all the work you did yeah, yes that too that too sometimes. okay good <laughs> i'm like just give yourself a hug just for being justina yes 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 yes, yes. <laughs> it's okay. a hard world a, a out there hugs. A lot of hugs and good vibes all the time. <laughs> good, 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 yes, good. I, but I've learned that I wasn't always like this. So I'm so um, proud of you. That's really hard to make these changes. Thank and you. Like, and it's kind of hard because for me, it's like um, I I'm like a strong person and I have like very strong opinions. So sometimes it's hard for me to be like I believe this my whole life, and then it's like oh I was wrong, you know. <laughs> so oh, even totally. going and you know just you know just realizing that you're wrong on something or the way you were going about something. So, yeah. That's the whole point of this. That's really good. I'm proud of you too. But <laughs> no, it's you. really like part of, all of us are learning, right? I'm a therapist, but I keep on learning. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always like with whatever new information we get, we're always learning again. So, yes, yes, yes. you know, but I do want to say to anybody else who's listening, who may be going through a really hard time right now, like reach out to either Justina or me, like if you just need to be connected to something caring and loving, you know, just to not feel alone, you are not alone. So many people are going through something hard right now. And just be very gentle with yourself, your body, take it slow, take the pressure off of yourself, you know, just be what you need to be, feel how you need to feel. Don't text people back if you don't want to, you know, don't put yeah. so much pressure on yourself, just get through moment by moment and i love that i love it. that it's just like like you said even if you survive the day it's okay mm -hmm. yeah. and i have one disclaimer everyone can take this message except for rahana if i'm calling you pick up <laughs> i'm just kidding i like uh, this if, if you're watching rahana <laughs> no i'm just kidding pick up the phone because yes the ring ring <laughs> I love uh, yeah, that. So just to um just to like close out we have some um like fun questions for you Sure. I just want to say oh. hi to people because people are saying hello, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to wave. And I know people wave a lot on this thing. Oh, really? I don't know how to wave back. Hold on. Oh, you have to like, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm we'll on like this, something new this today. <laughs> old person. How do people wave? I guess we'll find out one day. <laughs> yes, someone hi, waves. Hi, Jen. <laughs> like, I don't know how people wave. Hi, Jen. <laughs> okay, now I've ruined it. Now I can't see you at all. All right, we're good. Let's oh, just okay. let's that's do okay. your quick fire. <laughs> Rapid things. fire questions, yes. Uh, so the first one is, what is your favorite dessert? <laughs> oh my God, anything chocolate, basically. <laughs> oh, nice, 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 nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. What makes you smile? <sighs> Seeing people hug at an airport, uh, puppies. Little animals all the time, little like little animal videos make me smile. Just seeing people hold hands on the street, people laughing when they're with their friends, just seeing that joy and human connectedness is so amazing for me. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. And the last question is, what is uh, your best quality that you love about yourself? Oof. Can it be, my best? So Can it be my best <laughs> and my worst quality all yes. at one time? Yes. It's my best and my worst quality is that I have a huge, my heart, I have room for everybody. I am like a bleeding heart. I like, <laughs> I love everyone. And mm. yet <laughs> it, it can also be really not a great quality, you know, mm. because you have to be discerning and you have to be careful about the people you let in. So so it's that's that that's the edge, right? That's the work in progress. Yes. And I love that. And that's what you talked about that being open to people and letting people in and breaking down your wall, but also having boundaries and having boundaries yeah. is not a wall. So I love that. Yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's exactly like. right. So that's exactly right. Yes. So I'm glad so we no talked more walls. <laughs> no more walls, Justina. I'm going to check yes. on you. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> I'm I love it. I love it. it. And, um, Thank you so much for being here today. Wonderful conversation. Like if you what? guys are just tuning in, um, we've been talking for about 45 minutes. So I'll post it on my Instagram. You guys can rewatch it. Thank you. Can you see um, me? Yes, 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 yes. I think your friend John is saying, I was going to say, um, your heart is definitely your best quality, your huge heart. Aww. Aww. Thank you, John. Yours too. Yours too. <laughs> we're sending John some good vibes. Thank you, yes, Dina, uh, for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And we're doing that picnic soon. 
<laughs> yes, we are. I'm following up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Now it's public information. So okay, perfect. I love it. I love it. All right, Thank Justina, you. you have a good day. Goodbye, everybody. If you have Thank any questions, you. reach out on my Instagram or Justina's and hope to see you all soon somewhere. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.